I thought I would take you on a little tour of my favorite vintage pre-love secondhand stores in New York City. And we're focusing downtown. We're now in the Lower East Village on 7th Avenue, 7th Street. And we're going to go and start in Tokyo 7. Now, I've got some great finds in Tokyo 7 over the years. I got an amazing Yamamoto suit. I got a Marnie blouse. I got a lot of good stuff here. So let's see what they've got today. I kind of love that. I just think it's super cute and funky for Lila or me. Anderson Bell, extra small. The thing about some of these stores is you just got to be aware that when you get it home, if it's wool, it could have moths and you just got to put it in the freezer or get it dry cleaned, dry cleaning fluid, takes it off. Because it's a designer, it's $200, which is expensive. But we're going to have a look around and I think when I come into a store like this, you're not thinking I'm looking for a little back dress. It's not the way to shop here. You're looking for a piece that feels you're gonna wear it at least 10 different ways if you can, five different ways but many times, that it can take you through the seasons and that it feels like nobody else would ever have it because you're gonna get things that feel incredibly unique. I love that, I love that jacket because it's gonna have very long sleeves but it's cropped. It's fab. Celine, old Celine. You can always tell when Phoebe designed something and not Hedy Slimane. The cut is so different and she's got that sort of cocoon kind of shape, which is so her. I love that. So Tokyo 7 has lots of Japanese labels. It's not the cheapest. You're not gonna find an unexpected star here because the people who own the store know what they get and they know the price of it. But you'll find Comme de Gasson here and you get a lot of collectors who come here and recycle their wardrobe embassy so they'll buy from here and bring it back and you just get a really good selection of things. There are certain things I think would I get, like I love hats. The only thing with hats is you just think whose head has been in there. I do think that in hygiene, but I look at that hat and I just, I love that shape of that hat. But it's like sunglasses, I feel. That's kind of an amazing dress. It is super cool. It has a pocket. We might have to try it on very quickly. Should we just try it on? Okay. I'm just gonna put the jackets on here so we can just see. Okay, the Celine coat. It's just such a great cut. I mean, I don't wear black that much, but it's, she's just gonna do a new collection. Phoebe, and I sort of think I'd rather spend the money on seeing what she's gonna do next because I have a black coat of hers, but just as a shape, it's so beautifully cut. I love it. So that new probably would have been about 1,600 pounds. It's still got the label on it, $1,500. Celine is an investment, and that just shows you that it is the price of how much it cost originally. Next up is this shrunken jacket. I think this is Rick Owens, but I'm not sure. I just love the length of the sleeve and the proportion of the jacket. I think it works really well, but it's black and I don't wear black much. But I'm thinking of a skirt I recently bought, or we could try it on with the black one. I tend to not use changing rooms a lot when I'm in stores. I just kind of, just go for it. I feel slightly Diane Keaton. The polar neck. Something's got to give, the um, tailoring and the skirt. I think when I go to secondhand stores, I think, who do I want to be? It's an environment in which I try totally different things than what I know is my style, to see, could I go there? Who do I think of when I dress in that certain way? Some days, I would love to be Diane Keaton because I think she's the coolest ageless woman. But, um, yeah, I don't want to buy too much black. I just don't know. It's a lot of print, and I find that I'm wearing less print. So this is where I'd take the biggest risk if I got it. And I think, how often would I wear it? How many different ways could I wear it? No, I could only wear it as a singular piece of art. I quite like it with the silver. I think it's, it makes it more wearable. It's just worth trying things on. So, we are on Broom Street, and we're gonna to go to Ritual Vintage, which I haven't been to before. I've got a long list here, but this one, Ritual, was recommended to me by Carla Rockmore. One thing I always love to get in any vintage store is belts, because belts never go out of fashion, and you can always find great belts. So this is not like Tokyo 7, or what goes around, comes around all the real, real. 
This is really real vintage, and when I say that, I mean it's it's not that you're going to find so easily last season a liar or Lowe. You're going to find cool, unusual one-off pieces. Little monochromatic belt could be something. I don't have a gold belt. There's always room for a metallic belt in anyone's life, and. I don't even really care where it's from. It's just about, do you need a gold belt? $43, that's quite a lot. It is leather. It's a really nice metallic. Oh, that I like. That's just a super cool, plain silver belt. And I love the way that it's stretchy. It's a good find. $55 is still a bit more than I thought it would be. But we'll just try it on. I love that. It's fab that I'm getting. This is like, I'll wear it forever. It goes through jeans. It's stretchy, it will fit on a dress. There's nowhere I won't wear it. And if ever one day I lost my silver Prada belt, I'd be really happy I had this one in my cupboard. When you go vintage shopping, you have to have patience because you might look and think, I only see that in a, another era. And you have to think, how do you bring it into this era? And how do you make it feel modern. I like to wear vintage pieces and not feel I'm wearing a 1940s outfit. Everyone buys vintage differently though. So I just got a belt today, but I love the belt and I'll wear the belt. And when I wear the belt, I will think of the shopping experience because that's what happens when you buy vintage. So, who told me about this store? Carla Rockmore. Oh my God, I can't not see neon yellow. A little bit dirty, you can always cut off the end. $199, they're Balenciaga. Oh my God, that's so funny, look, this is, it's not the double T, but there's something nearly Trinity London about that bag. What's interesting here is this store, you'd look at it and think, is there gonna be anything really good here? But you know, there's Correge, there's, everywhere I look, there's really interesting labels, but it's done as if it, they don't care, you know? So it means you have to look really hard because you might think, oh, it's not worth looking, but one thing next to each other could be a really great piece. So you have to have time when you go into shopping. If you don't have time, you then won't find those hidden gems. Comme de Gasson, Marnie, Dolce Gabbana, European casual, I wonder what's in that one. Comme de Gasson I love because Comme de Gasson, it's like timeless. They always love a little bit of that sort of camouflage. They always do an interesting t-shirt. They always do a little print somewhere, a polka dot or a floral print. That's such a classic Com piece. And you know, many of you have seen my tailored kinder open, you know, like a man's frock coat. Comme de Gasson are really well known for that. So. This is a size small. They come up tiny. Comme de Gasson. Short sleeves because it is a um, Japanese designer and generally the sleeves are shorter. It's, just a, it's a really great piece. You can wear it with anything. It's something that would still be made now. A lot of good vintage. It's black. I don't know how I feel about buying something that's really furry. Not that it's real or fake fur, because this is going to be fake fur, but because I feel the dirt of it more. This is MGM, but the color is divine, so I've got to try it on. Love the color. The length, I'm wondering. You know, this is a length I don't normally wear, but the color is teal. This is a color that every single skin combination suits. Like when I did Match to Me on Trini London, every category, cool, cool, neutral, 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 warm, warm, they suit teal, a variation of it. I always do that dance when I'm quite excited. I've just seen something in sequins, you see? I mean, look at that jacket. It's a sequin biker jacket, to be more exact. This is getting to be a magnificent store. And I just don't have enough time in here. One thing I wouldn't get is I wouldn't get, even the this is Watanabe and people love collecting him, because it's bald quite a lot. The pockets are quite tired. 
I think you've got to be really careful when you buy knitwear that it doesn't look already like you should be donating it or selling it secondhand because it's a great label. So I wouldn't buy things like that. So the sunglasses here are all, you know, $180, $250 are expensive. But I do love that double G belt. With the snake, it's probably the collection that we love the most from Gucci. And it's $199. It's not bad. I might look at it. Just checking the label. I'm checking if it's straight. When you're looking at anything you want to just check, does that feel real? I love it, but I only like it for the um, label because I don't like the leather. I just think the leather isn't a good leather. It is cool, but it's maybe it's just too gold. I just have to say that's so, so beautiful. It's like a sort of French print, you know, gentleman fishing, really. But it's uh, Comme de Garçon from the catwalk. It's an amazing piece. This is an amazing store. I'm going to take a picture for John. Let's go. I have to say, I thought that was like the coolest store I've been into for ages. You missed a trick, girls. John is really <laughs> upset. John, that was such a cool store. I mean, so cool. There was Comme de Garçon, there was, there was Yamamoto, there was Rick Owens, there was just great labels. And it was all very done like it was at Oxfam. That's what's so amazing. So you really have to look there, Comme de Garçon catwalk oh, suit wow. for men, you know? Isn't that incredible? $2,400. But I mean, just like really great stuff. So like the one place that I chose not yeah. to go into was the one place. Yeah. Right? We're now going to the Rebag, which I haven't been to either. It is 390 West Broadway and we're going. So we're going to turn left here. Okay. I can't remember if this is Rachel Solomon or Carla Rockmore, but Rebag specializes in premium pre-loved designer bag. So if you want a designer bag, you can go in and tell them also what you'd like because they might have people coming in who might bring it in. Many people love a designer bag. And you know, the difference between new designer bags and pre-loved sometimes isn't that much. With Hermes, there's wait lists and certain Chanel bags for new ones, there are wait lists. So you might think that pre-loved is even more rare, but sometimes you can be waitlisted if you can afford to buy an Hermes bag, and you can come to a pre-loved store and actually find a beautiful one. I am very specific about bags. I don't like bags that say the label on the outside of the bag, too big. So if I looked at bags, for example, from Celine, I wouldn't buy a bag where I'm doing a big Celine. This is a new Celine bag, the old Celine bag, is more this with the double knot, and the Celine was really small, and there was an accent on the Celine, and that was when Phoebe made these bags. This is Hedy Slimane, who then took over designing. So there's a big difference there in how much you're promoting. I mean, Saint Laurent has done a lot of bags 10 to six years ago, where Saint Laurent was written very small, and then they reintroduced the YSL label, big, when it became really, fashionable that people wanted to say where their bag was from. Like one of the most bought bags from YSL at the moment is this huge padded black bag and the YSL is it's really, really big on it. So it just depends on your personal taste. This is something that started to trend. Christian Dior did a fashion show a few years ago and they made these bags and they put the fashion editor's names on the bags. This was probably about six, seven years ago. They were really coveted and beautiful colors and wonderful prints. So they then made one with Dior written on it. And then it's one of the most copied bags in market stores around the world. But the classic bag is what they call the Diana bag. It's this bag with the kind of little keychain which has Dior in different letters and a lock. And it comes in different sizes, you know. It started as one size, which I think was this size. But when a bag is successful, designers then make it in every size. Louis Vuitton has been through so many different prints. You know, the original Vuitton print is this print of the LV together. And then it progressed to the uh, checkerboard print here. And then it came in different colors. Some of these are much more rare ones. Like that's to me very pretty because it's like they've made the logo just a print on the bag. So I like that. I have a few Chanel bags and 
you know, there is a Chanel bag that for ages I wanted. It's a kind of square one. The 2.55 is the original bag that Coco Chanel made. They didn't actually have the double C on them at that time. They just had the line. And when Karl Lagerfeld came in, he then took this double C and made it a feature of the bags. This is a bag I quite love, the more square one up there. But this I never liked. I don't know why, but I just didn't like the chain of this bag. I think it lost some of its delicacy. So I never liked this era of Chanel. And then some of the leathers can look rich and beautiful, or like I think this silver one, I'm not sure if I like the texture that's come off on it. And I prefer the cushion than the line. And I prefer the flat leather than the um, seraphine leather. Hermes, these are beautiful bags. They're in incredible condition, they're in amazing condition. And these can go from five to $50,000. And there are some more unusual ones, you know, like this color I have never actually seen before. Um, this is the classic sort of nearly, there's a shade a bit darker than this, which is what I call the elephant color. It's not made from an elephant, it's just that, that like the color of an elephant. So these are probably the most, these are the Birkins in different sizes, and these are the Kellys. And these were named after Grace Kelly, and these are named after Jane Birkin. So what's interesting is I have a few of these bags. So these bags are not that old, because Prada started doing this about three years ago, maybe. This uh, crystals, and it would be interesting to see how much they are. Like, I know how much that bag is. You can still buy that bag in the store, so it'd be interesting to see. It would give me a sense of how expensive they are or not. If you're looking for a designer bag, I don't think I've ever seen a store that has such amazing um, pre-loved designer bags. It's incredible just to look at. And just to give you inspiration, if you have, you know, a lot of people feel it's a criminal amount of money to spend on designer bag. For other people, it shows a stage they've got to in their life that they want to mark. Some people mark things with buying a car, buying a piece of jewelry, buying a house, or buying a handbag. Everyone's different, everyone's entitled to what stimulates them and makes them feel, I tick that box, or it shows how far I've come, or I just love that object. New York is a great place to do vintage shopping because you can go from literally just kind of Salvation Army to very high-end designer, and within the streets of Soho and the East Village, and we haven't even done uptown yet in the thrift stores, the kind of charity um, stores. Probably it's my favorite town to buy pre-loved clothes.